My dad is a cop. Obviously, he always tried to downplay the danger of situations to my sister and me so he wouldn't scare us. But one morning, he came home shaken. I was a teenager at the time, so I asked him to tell me what happened. This was a while ago, so some of the details might be off, but the general idea is there. He and his partner were doing a graveyard shift, and there was a seemingly abandoned car on the side of the road. My dad was first while his partner stayed in the car to call in the radio report. I'm not too sure how this next part happened, but as he was approaching the car, he realized there were multiple people hiding in the car, all of them were super strung out. As he's going to back away to wait for his partner, he hears his partner running over. He identifies himself as police to the people in the car, and asks if there are any weapons in the car and things like that. His partner comes around and they start getting people out of the car, and they see a gun. His partner goes to talk to the people in the car to see whose it was, and at that time, one of the people had gotten away from the group. My dad was talking to the driver near the front of the car, and his partner was talking to a few others towards the back. The person my dad was questioning, his eyes went wide and he kinda backed up. My dad turned around to see why, and a man had a handgun pointed to the back of his head. He's a cop, so obviously he's had guns pointed at him before, but never that close. Thankfully, he's a beast, and he started talking to him to calm him down and just telling him to take his finger off the trigger. While he was doing that, he put his hands up slowly towards his face in the I surrender position, and the second guy knocked the gun out of the guy's hand. My dad called over for his partner and they handcuffed him. Obviously it's terrifying that if the driver hadn't widened his eyes, he never would have known, but I'm thankful every day that he acted quickly. I rather like having him around. Not a police officer, but my dad was. He told me a story where he responded to a call about a suspicious person on someone's property around 1am. He arrives at the address which is in a very secluded wooded area and gets out of his car and starts looking around with his flashlight. The house is 3 stories tall and in very bad shape, but covered by an unusually large amount of windows. As he's walking up to the house, a loud deep man's voice yells, Take one more step and I'll blow your head off. My dad tried to shine his flashlight at the house, but the windows reflected the light and he couldn't see. Another voice from the house told him to put his hands up and the light down, but while doing that he was able to hit the emergency button on his radio. My dad has a reputation in the department of always being able to handle things on his own. So when he hit the panic button, almost everyone available responded thinking the worst. He said he stood there for 10 minutes not knowing if he was going to be shot before backup arrived and surrounded the house. They searched the house and found all the doors to be locked, and no obvious signs that anyone had even been there. Still creeps me out when I think about it. This was back in my first year on the job. My partner was on a meal break, so I left me on the post by myself for the next hour until he got back. I decided to walk down from the north of my post to the south, past a few abandoned lots. As I passed one of them, I thought I saw something at the end of the lot by the fence line. Lots of times people using or just being vagrants will be in these lots. I shone my flashlight on the area but nothing was there. The trick of the low lighting in the area, no big deal. As I turned away, the fence on the far side of the lot rattled, giving that distinctive chain sound. I stopped and looked back, already thinking of how ridiculous this feels, and put my light on there again. Standing there was a man. He didn't look homeless, nor did he look like the kind of guy that hangs out in lots late at night. I asked him what he was doing. He simply stood there, not really looking at me, but kind of above me. I asked him. No answer. I told him to come over here as he shouldn't be in the lot. He just stood there. I decided to put it over the radio before approaching him. Post 4 Central, show me one male spotted at X Street back lot. No further, no emergency. So I walk into the lot, but I have to hop a small fence to get to where he is standing. I figured this guy must be tweaking out or something. He looks like he has no idea where he is. I hop the fence and look back up. This motherfucker was gone. I took my eyes off of him for two seconds and he was gone. No sound from the far fence chain. Nothing. I scanned the entire lot wondering where this guy went. 
look behind the only real cover, a dumpster, and inside of it, he wasn't there. Central raised me a minute later and asked the status, 109198, which means non-crime corrected, resuming patrol. To this day, I think I saw a ghost, as crazy as that sounds. I've never told anyone about what happened that night. I know there's a chance that maybe he just hopped the fence without me hearing it and took off. But in the amount of time it took me to hop a four foot fence? Highly unlikely. Back when I was working patrol, my partner and I got a welfare check call for an elderly man whose out of state family couldn't get in contact with him. These are the worst calls because you know what is behind that door. The family gave us authorization to enter if there was no answer, and there wasn't. The front door was locked, but we were able to open the garage door and go in through that door. The garage gave us signs of what was to come inside the house. It was filled with junk from floor to ceiling, front to back, with just a little walkway from the door to the house. After taking a few steps into the garage, we knew what we would find. The smell was overwhelming. So far, there is nothing creepy or scary about this as this wasn't my first body I found or seen. After making our way through the trash pathways in the living room and kitchen, we made our way to the master bedroom. We found him sitting in a rocking chair in his bedroom. Because decomposition had already set in, there were no muscles holding him together. So his upper body was leaning to the right at an almost perfect 90 degrees. His spine had snapped post-mortem, so it was a really awkward bend. It was really creepy to see a body bent that way without having any type of trauma. Still shakes me to my bones. <laughs> 